Hi everybody, it's Janet with Fruit of the Vine Art Studio, and it's Wednesday at 8, and I popped on to do a quick little painting with you here. Let me get this out of the way and pull this up, and that way I can see it. When you pop on, I'd love it if you would just uh, give me a comment, let me know that you're out there, tell me where you're watching from. I'd really appreciate it. I really do appreciate you being here with me. Tonight we're going to do something totally different. I'm going to do something that you haven't seen me do before, but what I've done is I've already got my canvas prepared, and I've got a little plate that I've put on here using just a very small amount of Mod Podge. I put this plate on here, but I'm going to remove the plate after we get going here, so let's get it turned down and see what is Janet doing tonight. It's going to be a moonlight, I can tell you that, but I think you already know that because I put that in the description. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using some navy blue, true navy, a little bit of black, and a little bit of white, just to get started here. Let me get this off of there. Okay. Some of the true navy. I'm going to get a little bit of black. And a little bit of white. You can kind of see I've got a little bit of a pencil line drawn there, but you'll be surprised when I pull it off what we're actually making here. How this is going to look. It's going to be really cool. Really cool, guys. Really cool. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my one-inch flat brush. And I'm going to get it just a wee bit wet just to loosen it up some. Hey, Steve. Thanks for commenting. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let me see. Did I bring the toothbrush in here with me? Ah, good. I do have a toothbrush. We'll be using a toothbrush a little bit, too. Okay, so now I've got my tooth my, my toothbrush. No, I don't. Now I've got my flat inch brush. Hey, James. Hey, I appreciate you being out there. Thank you for commenting. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it into the white. I'm going to get in the white first. And I'm just going to go around the outer portion of the paint, of the plate using some of the white. And then I'm just going to go straight into this navy blue. And I'm gonna start pulling that in here too. Get it a little darker along the outsides here. And I'm just gonna kinda of let it blend in with this white here. There we go, about like that. And then I'm going to get me some more of the dark blue. Oop. There. Wait a minute. This isn't showing you. There we go. Get some more of the navy blue and put that on here. Okay, and I'm just kind of bringing it together here. And then I'm going to get into the black, and I'm just going to pull the black right into this blue. Get a little more black here. Right along the top, on the edges. Going to bring some of the black down along the side, just a little. Just kind of blending it as we go down here into this white. I'm not too worried about the dark getting in it. I want to have a kind of a darker edge over here. So I'm just going to keep blending this dark coming down into that light. And just bring it on around because I want it to have a rounded look to it. Okay. 
Okay. Just let me bring this around right there. That got just a little bit dark right there in that crevice, but that's all right. That looks about like what I want it to look like. And then we're going to go into the black down here. And we're just going to fill this whole section down here with black. Bring in the black in right along through here. Now I do want the black to be along the edges of this. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to add just a little bit more to it. Let me just pull this across. I like that to have a nice, long, smooth stroke. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to kind of drag it over the edge as I'm pulling it around the side here. I might want to get a little more of the black. Go back and just bring it a little darker. I'd like it to be a little darker right along through there. I'm just barely flicking, basically. I'm taking just the tip of the brush and I'm flicking it just over the top of the canvas to where it's sort of getting it its own frame. Now, if this gets a little bit of gray mixed in with it, I'm not worried about that. In fact, we can even drag it just a little bit further in. I want this to be more of the black down here. I have a problem with this light here. I'm just dragging it in a little bit further. See how that kind of gives it its own unique looking frame? Can you see that there? I think you can. Turn it back just a little bit right there. Okay. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush and I get just a little bit more black right there. I can see that that's just missing a little bit. Let me get a little bit right there. There, I'm not going to worry about that little streak of gray right there. I'm going to rinse this brush off. I'm done with that brush. And I'm going to take this toothbrush now, and I'm going to dip it in the water. Hey, Carol, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you being out there. I just happened to look up and see the comments. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put this into the white over here. And I want the white to be kind of loose, really kind of, really kind of thin on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up taking my finger and just sort of spritzing the sky with this toothbrush here. Okay, just like that. So now we've got stars all over the sky with our toothbrush. And I'm done with that, so I'm going to stick that back in there. And as you can see, I got paint all over my finger, so I'm going to wipe that off. Even though it doesn't much matter. I've got paint all over my hands anyway, as we all know. All right. I don't know what is going on with this light tonight. It definitely has a short in it. And I don't know where it is. But I guess when it blows up and flames erupt, we'll know for sure. We'll know for sure then that it definitely, definitely has a short in it. I need to get a new one. I'm going to get more black out here, guys. I'm going to need some more black for us to finish this up. Now what I'm going to do is I need this to dry real quick. So, I apologize. I hate to do this. But I'm going to turn on my little hair dryer real quick. And I'm just going to give this a real quick hot second.
About now is when something will erupt and catch on fire because I've probably got, I don't know, seven or eight different extension cords up here with all this different stuff hooked up on it. In just a moment. I apologize, sorry for this racket. Pick it up and move it just a little bit. That gets it off of where it's wet on the paper. All right. I apologize once again. Sorry about all that racket. But sometimes it just makes it much quicker if we're going to try to make it um, timely here for us to be online together. I don't think you want to sit here all night while paint dries. Okay, so now we've got that ready there, and I'm getting paint all over my fingertips trying to move that. And what I'm going to do now, if I can find it, because I covered everything up, here we go. So I'm going to take my, my little palette, my little knife palette, paint palette, paint knife, and I'm just going to lift up this little plate that I Mod Podged on here. Just using the knife, I'm just kind of peeling it underneath where I've got my plate. Here now, let me turn it just a bit more. Ooh, I'm getting it on my finger. Don't want to touch my fingers on the side and then let me wipe that off. I'm going to wipe that knife off just to make sure. Ooh, that little piece right there seems to want to be stuck pretty good. All right. There we go. Now, there's the unveiling. This is what we're actually painting here. And all I have left to do at this point is give this moon a little bit of texture. And then I'm going to paint this down here, obviously, with the black. So... It'll just make a really nice moonlit scene with a wolf in the background, howling at the moon, howling at the moon. So I'm going to turn it towards me now, just so I can kind of get a, a better idea of what I'm doing. And I'm going to take my chip brush. Or I can even get it. No, I'll take my chip brush. I'm going to take my chip brush and I'm going to go into that white paint. Let me get a little more, because the white paint now, I'm going to need more white paint out. I'm going to go into the white paint, offload just a little bit on my paper plate here, and then I'm going to just fill this in back here with this white paint. And I'm not worried about it getting over top of the wolf. I'm going to paint him with black anyway. I just want to get a nice ring around the moon here with the white. All the way down to this area down here because this is going to be a reflection in water at the bottom down here. Which I know is kind of hard for you guys to see, but it's there. You'll see it when we get there. When we get there. Come on this little wild trip along with me here to Janet's little paint town or whatever you want to call it. Come paint with me. Come paint with me. Hey, now, I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to see the really cool sleds that I've got. But I've got them right now, and they're really neat. We can put a whole bunch of different designs on them. I've got a bunch of different designs ready for it. And I'll show it to you before we go. But for right now, we're going to keep doing this. Now, I'm just going to dip into this blue and then back into the white a little bit to where I've kind of got a mottled up look of a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. 
and I'm just going to kind of work around the edge here, just letting the brush do most of the work. Now, if you think you're getting too much blue in it, here, kind of get a little closer to the edge. See how that brush is sort of doing the work for me? It's making the moon have its own kind of color to it. I'm going to get just a littlest bit of blue down here in that area, too. But now you think that's too much blue, then just take your brush, rub it off. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a frog in my throat. I need a drink of water, and I didn't bring anything up here. Go right back into the plain white, just plain old white, and then just kind of work it right back on top of the blue in different areas. Get you some more white. And see how the moon's starting to take on its own sort of a shape now. You want to get a little down in here. There's a little bit of the moon that you want to gonna see a little bit of the blue coloring to it, just the slightest amount down in here. And right over in here. Okay, I think I want just a little bit more white to show on there. So I'm going to get just a little more white out, not too much, but I want it to be just a little brighter, just a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go straight white. I'm not even going to rinse off my brush at all, guys. Straight white, and I'm just going to add more of it right in here. Now, you know... I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something about making things like this, like the moon. Once you get started, you can just keep going and going and going and going and work on craters and the man's face and the moon. And then you're just, after a while, you're just, you're just going wacky with it. You got to say to yourself, okay, stop. That's enough of that. That moon looks perfectly fine. Looks like I want it to look. So we're going to let that go. Going to let that go. Okay. So... What you want to have now is just a little bit, let me see, do we want to just do it from there? No, that's not got enough on it. So put that brush up. I don't know that I'm going to actually do any of that. I think I'm just going to fill it in with the black at this point because I think that's probably what needs to be done. I'm just going to get my round brush. Okay, number eight round brush. I'm going to dip it in the water. And I'll tell you guys, you know, if you take your brushes when you're done and you wash them with a little bit of Dawn detergent or even a bar of soap, it will make such a difference for your brushes. They will last a very long time. A very long time. And another thing you don't want to do is use real hot water. And the reason you don't use hot water is because the hot water will cause this area right here, this metal area. I had a little too much water on there. It was going to drip on the painting. It'll cause the metal area here with really hot water. It will cause it to expand. And then your brushes will come out or your uh, bristles will come out much easier. And you don't want that. I mean, you don't want your bristles falling all out all over the place so now actually this is going to come down right here like that over the moon because we've got trees growing right here so put this right here gonna bring this down I got little white spots all in this black down here, so I'm just going over that black to get rid of those white splotches where I splotched that all over the place. And now I kind of need for the white to get dry pretty quickly here, but this is going to come across right here. 
and there's going to be a little white spot right in there. So I am going to very slightly put that in here, very lightly, because this is a little mountain range look back here. So we can go ahead and do that back here. You're going to make just a little hill looking area, another little hill, just basically pushing it up, pushing it down, just making little up and down areas. This can go up right here and then come down right there. I'm just going to get some black and bring it in here. Oh, that white's going to mix with it. Let's just work down this area for a minute and let that dry a little bit more. I'm getting anxious. <clears throat> Trying to paint in areas that I know I just put white paint on, so I have to exercise some patience here, guys, and let it dry a moment. If it doesn't get dry pretty soon, I'm going to get the daggone hair dryer out on it again. And that'll take care of it. Now I'm just kind of going around. What you're seeing down there is this little reflection in the water. And I know it looks kind of odd right now. But give it a second. Give me a moment. And, and, and it'll look right in just a minute. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Maybe it won't look right. Maybe it won't look like a little lake area at all. Maybe it'll just, I don't know. We'll wait and see because you know what? As we all know, there are no mistakes. If I don't like what it does, I'll let it dry and I'll paint over top of it. Make it look different. Let's see if we can get this little hind leg filled out right here. Bring this across right through here. That's a little better. It might be drying a little bit. Now that's a hind leg right there. Here's another one. comes over to here. Let me see if I turn him a little bit. That'll make it easier. I'm going to set my hand down here and I'm going to put my hand on top of it to, to support my arm. I might have to get the, uh, ooh, yeah, that's going in there and making that gray looking. Might have to get the fine line brush to really fill this in right. There we go. That worked. That worked there. Let's try working on this front leg. kind of dragging it up here and pressing it down just a little bit as I'm coming, as I'm pulling it towards myself, I'm pressing it down just a little bit. And I'm going to have to use my fine liner to get some of the, the hair area to show properly. Going to work on this leg right here. It comes up. Right through there. Press it down just a little bit more. There we go. To make it get all the way over to the line where I had it drawn. Okay. And then this right here. Mm, maybe I better mess with that with my other brush. 
<laughs> Maybe. Tried not to get too much white in the wolf because I knew I was going to try to paint over top of it pretty quickly. We're just going to fill him in completely with the black. And he'll be just the silhouette howling in the moon. Pressing it down just a little bit there. Working this up into this jaw. Bringing it over this snout. Let me turn it just a little bit. Let me see, how can I get to where that'll look right for me? Maybe right here. Don't want to touch that. And there we go. Got to get his little ear here. Bring it down here along his back. Hmm. That there was a separation back here behind that and his tail, but I guess not. I didn't draw it if I, if there was one, but we're just going to fill it in. And that's, yeah, I guess that's what it's supposed to look like. I guess that's what I'm meant to do. I didn't bring my little workbook up with me where I drew it before. To look at. Okay. Here we gotta bring his neck up here, right? Oh, wait a minute. We got a lot of hair to add right there. I'm gonna get my little fine liner here. And we're gonna work on his fur that comes down right here and it's coming down right here. He's a shaggy old wolf out here howling. I'll tell you, um, actually I have seen a wolf in the wild in West Virginia. One time, Steve and I were riding the four-wheeler in the East Lynn Lake area. And we came around this bend coming down a hill. And this wolf was just literally sitting off to the side. And I guess it didn't know what to think of us on a four-wheeler. It did nothing but sat there and watched us as we drove by. And, of course, we kind of got to moving at that point. But um, he was quite big. He was a very big wolf. It was very much a surprise to me to see that just sitting there, literally just sitting there on the side. And he was in the woods, though. I mean, he wasn't just sitting on a side of a road. And it and it's it's it's... A, a dirt trail that we were on but it, it it did it did really surprise me to see a wolf in the wild out like that now we've seen mountain lions up there we've seen black bears up there we've seen um geez little bobcats 
little bobcat, one little bobcat was right on the other side of the trailer at our, at our, where our cabin is. There's a couple of trailers. And there was a bobcat right on the other side of the trailer. Right now they, um, there's coyotes that are in the area. Or so we're told anyway, that there's coyotes up in that area right now, yipping and so forth. So that's kind of scary too when we take Coco up there you have to stop and think about those kind of things I mean yeah she's she's a medium-sized dog she's not big Coco only weighs 55 pounds you know and not that you know most coyotes aren't big either but if you got four or five of them coming after one German Shepherd mix <laughs> she's you know she might be able to fight that off. I don't know, but I think she's going to have herself her hands full trying to get herself away from that. So there's lots and lots of wild, wild, wild animals in West Virginia. When you go up there, you're really surprised with how many things you might actually see. And of course, we've seen, you know, basically every freaking snake that you can up there. There's rattlesnakes and copperheads and water moccasins and black snakes and rat snakes and all kinds of stuff just critters galore i love them as long as they stay out leave me alone all right i'm just gonna kind of bring this around right through here quit babbling about the wildlife of west virginia I'm going to make this little mountain range just go up a little higher right here. Maybe make that come over just a little more. And then we've got this back here. Which is another little mountain range. That's on the other side of the little lake kind of bring that across right through here to make it look like it's actually a little more connected this comes up this way all right gonna turn it this way now just work this over to here. Just pulling it across. Going to make another little mountain right there. Hey, there we go. Let me see. That needs to be just a little more level looking right across through here. Let me bring that. There we go. Now that looks better. Now, it doesn't look correct yet because these trees aren't filled in. So that gives it a kind of an odd look. It's like, well, what the heck? But you'll see as we get this right in here. How these... Now, these are not like I normally make my trees. I normally would just take my paintbrush and kind of move it back and forth. But this has more of a, a it, 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 it kind of matches the feel of the fur on the wolf. So I made these that way instead. I even bring it up a little higher and can even add another little peak to it if you want. It's up to you. Let me turn this little fan that way. Here we go. Actually on me.
Just fill these little trees in right here. Another one down here at the bottom. Let's kind of put that big glob of paint there to the middle and that way I could use the little bit that was on the brush to kind of just pull these little shapes out with the tree. Now here, there's no need to struggle with that. We're just going to take the black and fill this in. There we go. And I'm going to bring this right over through here. Drop the big glob right there. Get that thing off of there. And then work the little tree out. There we go. And then here we've got another little tree. And I'm just going to pull him straight out just by just drawing it as I drag my brush down. Leave a little white spot back there. And then we'll just kind of Drag him off here. And then we'll make another tree. Maybe we'll make this one a little taller. And we'll just... Drag it off to the side. Make it a little fuller at the bottom. And then do the same thing over here. Just kind of dragging it out. Fill it in down here at the bottom. All right, guys, there you have it. Let me put my... Let me see, has that got enough black on it down there? I think so. I think that'll work. Let me rinse this real quick. Hi, Janet. Thank you for joining us. I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing tonight? I am just about finished here. I'm glad I looked up and saw you there. I'm just going to touch into the white here. I'm just opening the lid, honestly. <laughs> Don't have to get more paint out. And I'm just going to... Put the little signature on it. And call it a done deal. Let me turn it around so you can see it a little better. There we go. Now, if you like, if you really like the, um, the darkened edges on it, you could always go back and take your, your flat brush again. Go back into your black paint and just drag it to give it that framed 
look, you can just drag the black, just very lightly swiping it, swiping it, I guess, <laughs> dragging it, flicking it, pulling it. There now. That's all I'm doing to it. That's it. Oh, that doggone thing keeps tilting to where you can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to get... It's broke on that one side. I'm going to have to get that fixed. Anyway. There we go. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I really appreciate you being here with me tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, remember, I'm not going to be here this Saturday. So, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.